Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if you've clicked on this one to vent in the comments, you've come to the right place. I've been using Linux since 2006, and while I love it, and I think it's the absolute best choice for me, it doesn't mean that I don't have a few gripes with it. So, I'm going to dive into the things that I hate about Linux, the things that annoy me the most. And you're welcome to join me in the comments, either to tell me how wrong I am, or to vent about the stuff that annoys you as well. But what would really annoy me is not telling you about today's sponsor. So let's fix that real quick. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is my favorite solution to run a Linux or gaming server. It's what I use to run my own Nextcloud instance and my own only office server. The interface is super easy to use. They are affordable, they have tons of documentation online, and they have one-click deployable servers for a ton of applications or games, like Grav, for example. Grav is an open-source content management system, or CMS. You can use it through a graphical admin panel or through the command line. Page templates can be written in Markdown, and it uses the Twig engine. And you can deploy it in one click on Linode and start building your website. And to get you started, Linode is giving you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux server or gaming server running. To get access to that, just click the link in the description below. Okay, so let's start with the big one. I am deeply annoyed by some parts of the Linux community. More specifically, I'm very annoyed at people who just won't let others use what they want. Whether it's Windows, Mac OS, a specific distro, or a specific piece of software, you always get someone who will attack these choices, say it's crap, that you're an idiot, or that what they use is better. And yeah, welcome to the internet, I guess, it's the same thing everywhere. Dissenting opinions are cool if they're expressed as opinions. If they're expressed as anything other than what I believe in is wrong, then it becomes an annoyance. We're a community based around open source, openness, and sharing of ideas. Preventing others to share their opinions through constant attacks is just not in the spirit of FOSS. End of the rant, and now you can cherry pick my previous content or tweets or whatever to find a specific sentence or phrase where I did exactly what I just complained about. Or you can watch the next chapter of the video and hear me do exactly that. Second thing I really hate on Linux is the software management. Now, I love the fact that we don't have to resort to the archaic hunt online to find an installer that's maybe not infected with spyware method. But I hate that we have to find out which packaging format a specific app uses after it fails to show up in our software stores. There are just too many ways to install an application or a tool. You have Snap, Flatpak, Debs, RPMs, the AUR, App Images, Python, you have base repos and third party repos and PPAs. You've got tar.gz archives to compile or tar.gz archives to run in place. It's just too much. I don't think fragmentation is an issue for distributions or desktop environments because, in a lot of cases, they do offer a different experience. They do something new. But for software management? No. Uh, Nick, didn't you just say that people should use whatever they like? Yeah, okay, I'm a hypocrite. All a packaging format is supposed to do is get you an app or a tool and add it to your menu. That's it. Put the files in the right place and let me mindlessly run the app. Why do we have so many formats? Instead of fixing one format to be truly perfect, we're reinventing the wheel. Whether it's Flatpak or App Images, I don't care. Let's just pick one and work on it to make it ubiquitous. We shouldn't have to know five or six different ways of installing an app or even have to choose between methods. All these formats exist because they all have one issue or another. Let's pick one, fix the issue and use that everywhere. While we do need variety for desktops and distros because one operating system with one desktop will never serve everyone perfectly. It's just not possible. But for software management, one solution can deliver the thing that everyone wants. Everyone wants the same thing out of a packaging format. Give me one place to get my app, let me install it and run it with all its features working out of the box. That's it. We don't need 10 formats for that. I'm looking at you, Deepin. Stop it. Next point of contention is hardware. And I know hardware support isn't specifically a fault of Linux in itself, but it's still a part of the experience. 
I wish we had more choice for hardware that runs Linux. Now we do have plenty of great manufacturers like System76, Tuxedo, Slimbox, Starlabs and a lot of others, but they all have the same problems. First, they don't always ship worldwide, which limits their devices to certain markets. If they do ship worldwide, shipping costs can be pretty high as well, making an otherwise great device inaccessible. Second, they don't have all the choices to completely serve everyone. Where are my powerful ARM laptops with awesome battery life? Where are my dedicated AMD GPUs? Where are my nice chassis colors? Where are my peripherals that work well with Linux? Where are my two-in-ones? Third, they can't produce at the same scale as more established manufacturers like HP, Dell, Lenovo and others, which means that they will generally be a bit more expensive than competing Windows-only alternatives. And the result is that people install Linux on devices that were meant for Windows, and that is one of the biggest issues Linux has. Installing Linux on any random computer is basically a hack. That device was never meant for Linux. The manufacturer generally didn't develop drivers for it themselves. And a community of volunteers can't develop perfect drivers for every single device there is. Which means that the experience can be hit or miss. Sometimes everything will run perfectly. Sometimes everything will be broken. And even worse, sometimes you get that in-between where most things run fine but a few things have hiccups and don't work all that well. Some function keys on the keyboard don't react as they should. The Wi-Fi is unreliable or the battery life is terrible. And this little area of limbo where most of the stuff works but the rest doesn't keeps people in that Linux is not yet ready mindset. Which is, in my mind, worse than having nothing work because in this case you're blaming the manufacturer, you're not blaming Linux. And it's the same with macOS or Windows. Try to install macOS on any generic laptop and see how well it goes. Or look at how long it took Valve to make Windows run completely on the Steam Deck. When a device isn't meant to be used with the specific OS, the experience can be pretty bad. And Linux has no right running as well as it does on so many different devices. And I will also not even mention specialized hardware like audio devices, stream decks, drawing tablets, fingerprint readers and others. Manufacturers make Linux drivers. Now, it's a big market. Which nicely transitions us to the next issue. I hate that Linux is still seen as a second-rate choice or a small niche enthusiast OS on the desktop. It's just not true anymore. According to some 2022 stats, there are as many devs that use Linux than macOS. We're not a small platform anymore. We have millions of gamers, which means we have at least millions of desktop users. That's a potential market big enough for any company. But if Linux on the desktop only has like 2.7% market share, it's gotta be worthless, right, for a manufacturer or for a developer. Well, look at it this way. In 2019, 47% of the world's population had a home computer, not counting phones. We are around 8 billion people on Earth, so 3.76 billion have a computer. And 101.5 million people use a Linux desktop. 100 million people. That's bigger than the entire population of France. Why don't companies try to address this gigantic market? And to anyone who's going to answer that with packaging on Linux is a nightmare, as I just pointed out, for a third party company, it's really not. Like I personally hate having to handle three, four or five different packaging systems. But for a company, they can pick one and distribute everywhere. Pick Flatpak, Snap or AppImage. Sure, I'd love if there was only one choice that would make things even easier, but honestly, as of today, a company that wants to distribute software on every Linux distro can super easily. But even when we do get an app that other OSs have, we generally get either an Electron version that sucks or a watered down version that doesn't get as many updates or lacks features. I hate that companies still don't realize we're a gigantic market for them. And if you think that Linux users wouldn't pay for anything or expect anything for free, just look at the stats for the Humble Bundle. Linux users always pay more than Windows or Mac OS users and buy a huge amount. Another issue that drives me crazy is Linux's stability. We have an issue here. Either you go with a stable distro, but you're stuck with packages that don't get their new stable versions, 
Or you get a more cutting edge or bleeding edge distro, but you're going to deal with issues. Just look at the Grub problem on Arch. Grub made a change that prevented a lot of Arch-based distros from booting, forcing some users to ch root into their system and reinstalling Grub. Not something everyone can do. Or look at glibc, removing a function that was old but never marked as deprecated officially, and breaking easy anti-cheat. Or look at the infamous Steam removed my whole desktop environment on Pop! OS. Or look at GNOME extensions routinely broken after each GNOME update. And I'm now expecting comments that are going to tell me that they've used Linux for the past 10 years and never had a single stability issue because they know what they're doing. And cool, but that doesn't negate all the other issues I just mentioned above or the ones that I've had. Okay, final point I really hate on Linux is the battery life on laptops. No two ways about it, in all the laptops I tested, battery life isn't fantastic. I never reached more than 7 or 8 hours, and that was with the biggest laptop batteries, 80 watt hours or more, and on 50% brightness with the CPU scaled way down in power save mode. Most of these laptops would get 2 to 3 more hours on other systems like Windows, and that sucks. Now sure, we have the newer performance modes in most desktop environments. We have TLP, or the Slimbook controllers and Slimbook battery, or the Tuxedo control centers. And yes, these apps work on any laptop, not just the laptops from these specific manufacturers. But these tools invariably just limit your CPU performance a lot and make the experience not that great. We have an energy consumption issue somewhere that makes our devices a bit too power hungry. Now again, this might just be me, but I've tried Linux on tens of laptops, whether they are my own devices or the ones I've been sent to review, and I can safely report that with these battery sizes, I should have gotten a lot more. Okay, let me conclude this rant before the comments explode or the like to dislike ratio goes way overboard, because while you might not be able to see it, I can. These are all issues that are fixable. Once companies realize that 100 million people is enough to make a buck, we'll see more apps, more hardware support, and this will drive development efforts, which should fix the battery life issues and hopefully the packaging formats as well, if most third-party companies distribute their software with a specific format. Unfortunately, this will also make the annoying parts of the Linux community even more annoying before they all decide to move to another OS that is more elite. Now, I love Linux, I have no plans to use anything else. And even if I stopped making videos tomorrow, I would still not use a Mac or Windows. Linux is just too good as an OS. The philosophy behind it, the fact that it's always moving forwards, the choice, it's all too good to pass on. But it doesn't mean it's perfect. And so, there you go, these were the things that I hate about Linux. What I love about Linux, though, is today's sponsor, Tuxedo. They're a company based in Germany and they sell laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. They have a huge range of devices from small NUCs and Ultrabooks to gaming towers to workstations to big giant gaming laptops. They have an option for most people and for most budgets. And each device is highly configurable. You can change the CPU, the GPU, the SSD, the RAM, you can add external drives, you can even have your own logo engraved on the lid of your laptop if you so choose. They also have an insane amount of keyboard layouts and a healthy choice of distros, although you know you can install any Linux distro on them because the hardware just supports Linux. And if a few tweaks are needed here and there, they have PPAs and repos that let you add the necessary configs to make sure that everything is golden. So take a look at the link in the description below and get yourself a new device from Tuxedo. They're really cool. So, thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment, angry or not. And if you dislike the video, you can also dislike it and write an angry comment as well. They're welcome, as long as they're polite. And if you really enjoy the channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Or you can just donate using the super thanks button or the PayPal link in the description. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!